In 2012, after 38 years, New Jersey's Six Flags Great Adventure closed its drive through wild safari feature to the public. <laughs> but for the 38 years before that, Jersey people like myself could get in their Honda Civic and drive their way through the wild plains of Jackson Township, New Jersey. And this wild safari didn't have things like raccoons, possums, rats. You know, New Jersey's kind of known for like things that eat trash, okay? This wild safari had actual African animals like elephants, hippos, rhinos. It was pretty cool. They closed it in 2012 after 38 years, but I went to it once in the early 2000s and I never returned again <laughs> after that. I'm a high school freshman and me and a few girls get invited by some senior boys to go in their car to Six Flags for the day. And this is a big day for us, okay? We're just gonna giggle and be cute and have fun and go on roller coasters, you know, shaping up to be a really monumental day in Julia's uh, high school career. So we get in the car, we drive the hour to Six Flags, and when you get there, you have a choice. You can go to the theme park or to the safari. And we chose to go to the safari because we want to see the animals when they're like fresh, you know, and like ready to see people. So we go through this magical wooden gate that looks like you're entering Jurassic Park, and you can tune in your radio station to a local station that narrates your journey through the wild safari. So you're driving through, and the voice on the radio says, look to your right, and you'll see an elephant. And we look to our right, and we do, right there, right next to our Honda Civic. And there's fencing around the safari, but there's no fencing between the road and the animals that you're seeing off to the side, um, which is pretty exciting. And really no attendants or staff anywhere in sight within the interior of the safari. So we're just driving through, you know, look to your left, you'll see a giraffe. And we look and there's a giraffe and it sticks its head in our moonroof to see if we have like a tasty cake or a soft pretzel to give it. And we don't. So then it keeps moseying along and we're doing this, you know, loop for a couple miles. It's a pretty good sized safari. And then you get to the ending and a choice. You can either depart, go park and go into the theme park, go on rides, giggle, be cute and have fun. Or you can go through the monkey exhibit, which is like the grand finale of the wild safari. So we're like, we came to see everything here. Okay. So we get ready to go into the monkey exhibit. And there's a lot of like enter at your own risk signs before the monkey exhibit. And I'm like, we just drove past an elephant in a Honda Civic. I'm really not worried about what some monkeys are gonna do. But just to be careful, we put the mirrors in, you know, we roll up the windows, we lock the doors, and then we enter the monkey exhibit. Much less like majestic than that Jurassic Park style wooden gate. It kind of looks like you're entering a prison yard, quite frankly. And we, we start to roll through the fence and that radio station that's been narrating our journey just like cuts out, <laughs> silence. There's nothing. And we drive and, the, and there's no like fake water fixtures or anything anymore. It looks a lot less exotic and we're, we're driving down this road and we're looking around and at first we don't see any monkeys. It looks like a barren field surrounded by a very tall fence topped with barbed wire. And we're looking around to see, you know, where these monkeys could be as we follow this small line of cars. And then when I look at the field closer, I notice it's not actually barren. I see hubcaps, windshield wipers, <laughs> bumpers, just pieces of twisted metal and car. And that's when us high school students realize we've made a terrible mistake. And we look around, and that's when I get my first glimpse of the monkeys <laughs> ahead in the line of cars. I see a group of what appear to be rabid baboons going from vehicle to vehicle and ripping every single car to shreds. And my friends and I start screaming, oh my god, oh my god, what's going to happen? And my friend Bill, who's driving, looks behind in his rearview mirror to see if he can get out, and it's too late. The fences have closed, there's no staff in sight, and we realize we have to sit in our car and wait for our turn <laughs> for the baboons to get to us. The radio station is silent. The girls in the back were praying, and we watch as the baboons go from vehicle to vehicle. And we can't hear any of the New Jersey families inside their minivans, but we can see the shadows of their arms just like flailing in terror as the monkeys get to their car. 
And then the baboons get to us. And the monkeys are so much louder than I would have expected. They are so angry. They're taking their teeny tiny monkey hands and they surround the car. They're on the top, they're on the hood, they're on the back, and they're slapping the car as hard as they can. And we see them above in the moonroof and they're like pointy monkey teeth are gnashing at the window and they want to get to us. I don't know what they want to do once they get to us, but they are so angry. And then they look to see what trophy they will take from our vehicle. And then they take you know those black nubs that shoot out the windshield wiper fluid? They bite those off the hood, they spit them onto the field, and then my friend Bill yells, that's it, and hits the gas. And we can only move forward a, a, a foot, but they slide off the back of the car and they run to the minivan behind us. We park our car and assess the damage, and the nubs are gone. The car is covered in little sh smeared handprints everywhere. And we go into the theme park to try and have fun. And I learned something that day, after all that screaming. The monkeys are angry, they are organized, and they're waiting for any opportunity to fuck each and every one of you up. My name's Julia Lechner, thank you so much.